Hello everyone, before we get underway, we have an update from Chicago. So let's see what is going on in that beautiful sanctuary city. There are other issues this afternoon in migrant shelters other than measles, the condition of the food at many of the facilities. Yeah, some migrants are now buying their own meals, even as the city spends millions to feed them. Lourdes Duarte has been looking into that, and she has tonight's WGN Investigates. Lourdes? Hi, guys. Yeah, the city has three priorities when it comes to meals at these migrant shelters. Make them high quality, culturally relevant, and nutritious. Well, city-approved vendors are meeting those food standards, but residents are not happy and have come up with their own solution to fix the food. Outside the largest migrant shelter in the city, lunchtime has become a business. Watch as a car delivering Venezuelan soup rolls up. They aren't donations or food deliveries by the city. The makeshift business is run by former shelter residents who saw need as complaints about free meals came up. Horrible, horrible que a veces la dan picante, con picante. ¿Cómo se ocurre de darle una comida a los niños así? New arrivals are choosing to use their own money to pay for food, even as the city signs multi-million dollar contracts with two different businesses to feed them. WGN Investigates took a look at those contracts and payments. 77 Communities Meal Service has already been paid $3.7 million to feed migrants, but could stand to make as much as $45 million. A second company, 14 Parish, has received $3.8 million, according to city records, with the potential to make more than $57 million. The residents who are choosing to skip the free food and eat outside gave us images of the city-provided meals, saying they may look fine but taste terrible. This isn't the first time complaints are made. The city even switched vendors earlier this year, hoping to address the issues, but trouble has come up again. The city sent us this statement, saying it collects feedback from residents on food service, adding the city seeks to work with our food service provider partners to continually improve food options for residents based on the feedback we receive. And we did contact the food vendor for that Pilsen shelter, 14 Parish. They tell us that they are meeting all the nutritional requirements in that city contract. Meanwhile, the story also brings up some questions about how much food is provided at shelters. There is no mandate in place, but it is part of the city's effort to meet the basic needs of new arrivals. I'm Lourdes Duarte, WGN Investigates. Wow. There is no mandate, but we do have migrants complaining these migrants don't want to assimilate like myself and other immigrants did in the past instead they want to bring their culture here and enforce it upon the system and that includes the shelters and if they don't get what they want then they cry about it what a waste of money imagine if all of those millions of dollars were to be invested in our school system for the future of this country or our infrastructure that's falling apart but no no as they stated instead we have other issues at hand and yet another slap in the face to all Americans. Thank you, Joe. You're doing an amazing job. All right, let's go ahead and move forward with today's episode. So if you thought that some of the Venezuelan migrants were the only ones flashing that cash, you're wrong. You are absolutely wrong. Now we have Colombian migrants in the house repeating the same flashy behavior on social media. Please meet Colombian migrants, William and Pamela. See, at first, when I stumbled upon their content, it seems like they were working and not living in a shelter, not being a burden to the state. So I said, maybe I can give them a little break. Because let's face it, our standards and expectations are currently incredibly low. So I was saying, Papa Biden, please, Give me something to work here. I implore you give us something better. But then, as things were looking sort of decent from a distance, they opened their mouths. And that's when I realized they are showcasing how to enter this country illegally, how to save money to buy a house, but not here. No, 
they want to make the purchase in Colombia. Can you believe it? Because their main goal is to go back to Colombia. Okay. You check it out. Yeah. Then we're going to blow that f***ing truck back to Colombia. Which left me baffled. I mean, how are these two sweet migrants able to make it through Joe Biden's strict, rigorous, and secure asylum-seeking process? But... I guess not all heroes wear capes, and these two are clearly heroes. Seeing that they were proficient in skipping the line in front of millions of immigrants that are paying their fees and waiting on their immigration proceedings. Over and above, they don't like to pay rent and complain about some of the rules we have here in America. Equally, this wonderful couple has over 130,000 followers and growing. Where? Where? Yeah, you guessed it right. On TikTok. Hence, Colombian migrants complaining. Be smart. Don't pay rent. And contribute to Colombia's economy. Let's get started. Right, guys before i go over the translations i want to briefly touch base on this report there is a connection between migrants and apps like uber eats and doordash it's like a match made in heaven but let's watch well, it's no secret many migrants are working as food delivery workers. That's right, but because they're not legally authorized to work in the U.S. yet, they have to go through some extra hurdles to be able to do that. As they told our Lisette Nunez, this often involves renting bikes and even posing as friends to earn a living. Keyword, friends. Outside the Roosevelt Hotel, you'll find dozens of scooters parked. Migrants say it's their lifeline so they can provide for their families. Jesus and friend me are from Venezuela and arrived with their children two months ago. The two are renting out scooters from friends to deliver food. Friend me says he pays about $300 a week to rent out a scooter. Because the two are not authorized to legally work in the U.S., they tell me they pay an additional $140 every two weeks to borrow a friend's Uber Eats food delivery account and be able to make a living. The father of three says when he's paid rent on the scooter and paid to borrow the Uber delivery account, he takes home about $500 a week. And the situation is far from ideal. Jesus tells me one of his scooters was recently confiscated by police since it was not registered. That law setting him back and costing him hundreds of dollars worth of debt. He says all he wants is to be able to legally work and make enough money to move his family out of the Roosevelt Hotel. In Midtown, Lizette Nunez, Fox 5 News. And we reached out to Uber for a statement on the story, but did not hear back. Naturally, Uber does not want to talk about something like this. Nevertheless, it makes sense, right? Going to a country illegally, then into a shelter, complain about the food and the fact that you are unable to work because you don't have documentation and then blame it on everyone else. It makes perfect sense. Using the same excuse the report previously mentioned, or it could be a common sense thing, right? Think about it. Why spend thousands of dollars on attorneys and applications to start the asylum seeking process and work permit process when you can just use that money to help you get started in making money by finding a loophole or friend that will lend you the app to pretend you are him or her and then get started making some money to save it and then eventually leave the country. But how are Americans getting screwed over by this? Well, remember, if you're a migrant that has no work permit, that means you have no income. 
and they can go to the shelter system or the benefit system in general and say, I have nowhere to go. I have no income. Help me. And that's where they get the assistance, either by living in the shelter for free or like New York, giving them those nice and beautiful debit cards, all funded by the taxpayers. Meanwhile, a migrant could very well be making money on the side. Remember, it's not under his or her name. They are using someone else's account. And that's how they are allowed to screw over America. And that is why a lot of Americans are in shock when they see migrant videos with cash on their hands. And they're like, I don't even have that. How is that possible? Well, you are working. You are on the system. You have an income. And even if you don't have an income, the government may still give you issues when asking for assistance. Once again, I'm not saying that's what they are doing here, but keep all of that information in the back of your mind. Now, let's translate their message. Okay, so here they are by a river near the Colombian and Panamanian border. So he's saying that this is a crazy experience thus far. And she says, I don't recommend it too much while laughing. Uh, saying that uh, we went through hunger, but we're doing it. So he says, yes, hello to everyone. And uh, here they're posting more videos on their journey. Yes, remember, all of these videos are on TikTok. Uh, and the caption on the video says, this was my path while making it to the border, the American border. Look at that smile, huh? all that human trafficking and it's cool now it's a trend it is uh, something that you want to post and be proud of on TikTok, and you get a lot of views a lot of comments a lot of likes and i wouldn't be surprised if these two are now making money from posting on TikTok because they have a huge following Furthermore, remember that I said they were not in a shelter. Well, that is currently, but they did post those pictures where it shows they did uh, live in a shelter, perhaps briefly. I, I don't know if it was for a few days or a few months. Not clear on that, but you can see right there, once they made it to America, they were surrounded by other migrants and yeah they are making it look so cool no fear of uh, whether or not immigration looks at these videos they just don't care it's uh, a complete joke guys before we continue with the video please smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already it helps the algorithm tremendously so that more people can watch these videos thank you here he's saying guys we just uh crossed the river into the united states with all of our fellow migrants here and there she is in the background with another honduran guy and they're happy they're happy all right so in this video he's saying this is what i made in america in six days of work and he's just counting the cash and you can see the girlfriend or wife is having a good time with this too. So he keeps on counting and let's see how much the total is. 65. $650 right here in my hands. And she says, lend me something. He says, okay, here. Take 20. Take 200. 100 for your mom and 100 for mine to send uh, in Colombia. And then this, uh, another set here is to pay for our phones. And then another 14 to pay for our car payment. Yeah. He's saying we are renting this car. Very important word, okay? They are renting. So they don't own it. You know, I, I have questions in regards to what type of documentation they are using uh, to drive. He keeps on counting here and then he says he has around 21 she says for what he says what do you mean this is for savings 210 he says it's 210 dollars to save so that we can finish our home 
our plans, our dreams. This is what we came for. Guys, you need to save. Okay? Save little by little. And then the girl says, yeah, remember, you want to buy your own home. Because that way when you're in Colombia, Ecuador, Venezuela, Brazil, or anywhere, you're celebrating and dancing. And you say, yeah, this guy was right. Now I'm happy. Now I'm dancing. Because now I have my beautiful home, my beautiful car, and even my pool in my house. Once again, in their home country. Incredible, isn't it? But guess what? They were migrants in Spain. Yeah. They were living in Spain and here he is replying to a comment that is asking them which one is better, Spain or the US? So he shares the question with her. Again, what do you think, Spain or the US? So she says, look, I haven't been here for a long time, but I love Spain. I love it. The difference is that here in the US is very expensive, she's complaining. And he says, yeah, it's true. In Spain, the food is cheaper. And the quality of life is about the same, he says. The security here in the US is really amazing, he says. So it's about the same on that aspect. The security is pretty good. But when it comes to getting paid, that's when things are different. Here you're able to make a little bit more money. But let me ask you guys the same question. What do you think, those that have been uh, in Spain and here? What do you think? He's asking the comment section. She says, we just got here, so we're still new. There you have it. Publicly stating that Spain is another beautiful country. So what happened with the asylum seeking process and fear of life? I don't know. Let's move on. Here he is and saying, we are in America. And let's show you how we are working. What is this? This is DoorDash. It's an app where we are able to deliver food. So he's explaining that to his audience that are probably and most likely other prospect migrants, okay? With over 130,000 followers on TikTok. He's showing her right there, picking up the food with the app, and then we go back to our vehicle to start the delivery process. And that's it. 15 minutes to uh, finalize the delivery. And we're going to make 13 bucks. We're going to show you how this works. We go and deliver the food at the person's home, and then we get the money in our accounts. All right, guys, so we go towards the door of the home, and then we will take a picture of the delivery as proof, okay? And then the person picks up the food, and then that's it, everybody moves on. So he's proceeding in showing how she's doing the delivery, and go ahead, show it, show it to everybody. $13, look, this is amazing, it's a blessing. And they're happy that they are working uh, with DoorDash. Here Pamela is saying that we live in a mobile home and a lot of people ask, where do we park it? She says, we park it where we are legally able to. And then she's going inside of it and answering questions of her followers that are curious about where she cooks and she's showing right there how she does it also other questions are uh, about dishwashing and she says well we have pipes and we just wash the dishes like anybody else would what about the restroom and the shower so right there this is where we use the restroom and here is where we shower and she's very happy about it. And then another question is, how much do you pay in rent? And she says, I don't pay anything. We own it. William and I own it. And just to let you know, she was not specific as to how much she paid for it or who she bought it from or if it's under their names. She just said that they own it. So I am guessing it is under their names. Now here on this video, 
it is another question in regards to the comparison between Spain and America. He says, don't get me wrong, in Spain, there's uh, people that make good money too because they have good jobs. Here in America, yeah, you're also able to make good money. I've seen people that make good money. But in Spain, there's people in Madrid and Barcelona that make good money. If you have a good career. So we don't know. But here in America, money goes around too. So he's asking everybody, what do you think? Uh, guys, those that have lived in America and Spain, what do you think? So, once again, they are just uh, stating that it is basically around the same thing, America and Spain. Moreover, on this video, the caption reads, I was deported from Mexico when I was coming to America. He's asking, why did we go through the Darien Gap uh, to come to America when we could have come via plane from Colombia to Mexico, being that Colombians are able to do that. So he's uh, saying, Pamela, please tell them why. And she says, indeed, we did. We bought tickets. But yes, we bought a, a vacation package from Colombia to Mexico, round trip and everything. And uh, we had uh, food paid and everything paid, but nope, Mexico still deported us. They asked us if we were going to America. And we said no, obviously. I, we came here for tourism only. And they did not believe us. And keep in mind, we were recently married. Yeah, we pretended to be going on a honeymoon, but Mexico did not believe us, he says. We also brought money and our marriage certificate but nothing, they still deported us. So <laughs> figure that, Mexico was able to deport them, but the US was not able to do it. So then he's just sharing the story about how they separated them during that process. Uh, he was with the men and she was with the women. And he says that they didn't respect the fact that we were married. They still detained us and separated us during uh, the deportation process. He's speaking incredibly fast and they're both talking on top of each other. So it's a little bit uh, difficult for me to understand everything they are saying. But the main point is that they are complaining about how Mexico treated them. And she's laughing at it, but um, they are complaining about that process when they flew to Mexico. And that is why they went through the Darien Gap and crossed eight countries, he says, to be able to make it here in America. And now we are working hard here in America while making our country proud, he says, our Colombian country proud. Pamela says, it is worth to mention that I told William, yes, let's do the Darien Gap because I didn't know how difficult it was, but let me tell you, it was difficult. And he says, I know that you guys see a lot of videos about the Darien Gap, but let me tell you, it is very difficult. The videos don't do it justice. So he's saying, everyone that went through the Darien Gap, please share your story and tell everyone how difficult it was. So they're both going over how difficult uh, that process was for them. On this one, they are laughing and he's saying we are outside of Costco. They are not letting us inside because we don't have a membership. And we can't believe it, guys, that they don't let us in. I'm going to grab one of the cards, he says, and I will try to enter. Let's see what happens. So they are laughing about not being able to enter the store or the market without a membership. Here they go. And she seems a bit hesitant to it. But remember, these guys are probably making money on TikTok. So they need content, okay? They know they cannot enter yet. They will try to go inside anyway. So he says, look, guys, just look. People are going out. 
and we're going to try to go inside. And there's a lady that asks about the membership card. And she tells him in Spanish, if you don't have a card, you're not able to enter. He says, really? He's like, wow. So he goes back. He says, yeah, guys, our second attempt was denied. Huh? So they're laughing. Even though we have money, they still denied us. What do we need, he says? Oh, a membership. This is ridiculous. He says, no. This is what I don't like about this country. Yeah, she asked you for a membership? Yeah, and, and he says, she was a Latina woman. Probably from our own country, our own race. And she doesn't let us in. So he's saying that because she was Latina, she was uh, supposed to just let them in without a membership. So he says, we have money and they don't let us inside? I don't believe it. She says, please guys, explain to us in the comment section. Right from their own mouth. So a Latina person is supposed to let them do whatever they want. And that's something they don't like about America. That we have some rules here. Anyway, let's continue. My love, look at this comment. If you're not planning on staying here for a while, then be intelligent and don't pay rent. And she says, yes, my friend, that's right. If you're like us and you're planning on returning to your country to build your home and to keep your dream alive, this is the best thing you can do. He says, yes. Uh, especially those of you that know uh, that you are spending most of your money in paying rent. So save. Yes, guys, please save, especially uh, you know that in our countries, our rents are expensive, but here in America, it's worse. So always save as much as you can. So he says, look at your lamp. What about your lamp? She says, yes, you have to save. You see, this is a solar lamp and uh, this is what I do. I put it by the window and then at night I have my lamp and I don't pay any bills whatsoever when it comes to electrical. He says, you're saving on everything, right? And then she says, yes, of course. I'm not going to give them my money. My friends, she says, if you are like us that want to save and return to your country, this is a great option, a mobile home. You'll be saving in rent. But if you are a big family that brought your grandma and kids and everybody's here and you want to stay, then yeah, you probably would want to get a home to be more comfortable. But he says, my friend, here in America, you can access anything, okay? So in Colombia, people would complain about things being difficult and then they come here and then they are under the same conditions of meaning being restrained with money and income. So he's saying that you need to put your mind to it and save as much as you can. So this is what you can do to make your dreams come true. Anything is possible, he says, unless coming back to life. And she says, yes, your mind, with your mind, you're able to do anything. You see, I did it. You can do it too, he says. So just say yes and do it. And that is a wrap. So remember, guys, you are able to do anything you set your mind to, including a nice and big change in November. And if that change doesn't work out, then we will go ahead and make another change. But we cannot sit back and just take it. Otherwise, this country will continue to fall apart little by little. Right now, it is an undeniable argument that the asylum-seeking process must be halted and amended, along with other things that we need to make this country better. So put all of that in mind. Thank you everyone again for the amazing support. The special thanks and a shout out go to my loyal and exclusive supporters. So make sure to find that shout out in the description of this video. Please don't forget to follow me on X, Rumble, Facebook, Instagram, and my Discord server, which is where I tend to post a lot of these migrant photos, videos, and information 
before I do it on YouTube. The invite link is in the description of this video. And finally, please smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video with at least one person. And let me know what you think in the comment section below.